Hello and welcome to this tutorial on line weighting for architectural drawings within Rhino. Today we're going to be looking at how to add line weights to an architectural drawing within Rhino and how to set these line weights based upon the hierarchy you're trying to get across in your drawings. I've dropped a couple of references onto this page and these are a couple of drawings by Ian Kleplicki who worked with Future Systems. And these drawings were originally done by hand using rotary pens, but I believe show a really good use of line weights within an architectural drawing. They clearly are used here to kind of represent a different hierarchy within the drawing. We've got sort of areas of really high detail, which are done in a much thinner line weight, and then outlines and bespoke bits of the piece of drawing that are shown with a heavier outline line weight to give the drawing some weight and to really clearly show the certain forms that are coming together within this piece. So we're going to be applying these similar principles to our drawing here and I'll be going through each of the line weights in turn and telling you why I'm adding different line weights and print widths to these drawings. Now while we'll do this we're going to be working in the model view to set the line weights but we're also going to be looking at how these are reflected in our drawing layout sheet which I've got here. Um, to be able to see the line weights within your drawing layout sheet you have to turn on something called the print display. So if we type up the top print display and make sure the state of this is turned to on. There. What that would do is it will then show the drawing with the line weights we've set applied to it. Now currently we've got a black print colour and a default print width for all of our layers in our drawing. So at the moment you can see that there is no differentiation between any of the lines within our drawing. So we're going to go through the drawing, setting up the line weights, and we're going to be looking at how these are reflected within our layout page. So let's begin. We're going to start with the thickest line type within the drawing. And that is what I've labelled up here as section thick. And if we turn that on, we can see what that is in this particular plan. Now, I usually reserve this layer for the primary structure of the building or the external walls. This is going to be the darkest and thickest line within your drawing, so it needs to be the kind of primary piece of structure or the primary outline of what you're trying to show. This is going to be the boldest thing and we're going to be working down from this point onwards. So I usually put things in this layer like external walls, pieces of primary structure that might be holding your building up and anything that the rest of the building is kind of reliant upon in that way. For this, I usually keep the print colour as the darkest colour we're going to be using in the drawing. And for this drawing, I'm going to keep that as black. And for the print width, I'm going to set it anywhere between a 0.7mm to a 1mm, depending on the scale and size of drawing I'm doing. I'm doing a 1 to 50 drawing on an A3 page, so a 0.7 should be good for that. There. Now, from this point, we also have the section thick, section mid, and section thin. So you see I've got three different types of section line here. Now, these are reserved for different things that I'm cutting in my drawings. The section line basically means anything that's being cut. And I want to have a different hierarchy of these because I might be cutting a primary external wall, but also an internal wall. And I might want to give these different thicknesses depending on their hierarchy within the building. So if I turn on the section mid layer, you can see here we've got all these kind of primary pieces of timber stub work and I'm going to turn on the section fin as well and then we've got our plaster board that sits around that timber frame. So these are my sort of three layers of hierarchy. We've got our external wall, we've got our timber structure internally and then we've got our fin pieces of plaster board and also our doors internally as well. Each of those are shown on a different layer because each of them have a different hierarchy within the drawing. The plasterboard and the walls wouldn't be able to be held up without the timber studs. So I want to show the timber as a darker line than the outside plasterboard line. So each of these are being cut, so they still need to be a dark line type, but they need to be thinner than one another so we can clearly see the difference between them. So for the section mid, the stub work, I'm going to put it as half the size of my outer wall. I usually quite like my thickest line to be much thicker than any of the other lines in the drawing, so it's really clear that that's the kind of outer extent or boundary of your building. So we'll put that as a 0 0.35. Um, also bear in mind that this print width is linked to the units in your drawing, but this is set to millimetres at the moment, so it's 0 0.35 of a millimetre. And then for the section fin, we're going to make that even slimmer, and I'm going to make it a 0.81 mil there as well. 
Um, a good thing to check when you're setting these up, and if we go back to our drawing here, you'll see these line weights have now been applied to the drawing. It's always good to jump back and forth between your layout page and your model page to see how these line weights are affecting. And when you've got two lines like this very close together, it's important to check that they're not blurring and becoming one line. Here you can see, we can clearly see the definition between each of the two lines. And I might even take that down. We could take that down to 0.13 to see how that changes as well there. Um, I think 0.18 will be fine for now because we want to still show that it's being cut but you want to be able to make sure that there are two layers of the plasterboard here and they're not merging into one fatter line that could be eclipsing or could be looking like the same as our external wall. So at the moment you can clearly see here that each of the three layers I've put on have a different hierarchy with one another and it's clear to see the outline and also the internal layers there. Now the next levels we're going to go down to are the elevations and by elevation I mean anything that isn't being cut but is important to the drawing. Now these should be thinner than your section lines and I also like to make the colour of these lines slightly lighter as well. So if we turn on our elevation mid and also our elevation thin. We've got two and I usually keep two different types of elevation depending on how close they are to the camera. So we've got our cut line here and this staircase is actually going upwards to the floor above. So I want these lines to be slightly darker than the staircase below it that's going down to the floor below. So we can show a slight differentiation between which staircase is coming closer to the cut line and which staircase is going further away from the cut line. So what I'm going to do with these is we're going to change the colour and we're going to make it a dark grey there. And I'm actually going to put the thickness of the elevation mid, we'll put it at a 0.81 as well. So matching the section line, but because the colour is slightly lighter, it will read as being slightly less important as the section line it's up against. And then for the elevation thin, we'll do the same grey, but we'll do it a bit thinner, and we'll do it at a 0.1, I think, millimetres there. So we can clearly see the difference. Let's jump back to our plan drawing to have a look at that. So there, you can see that because we've used that slightly lighter grey colour, it's slightly coming off from the section and you can see the difference between the things that are being cut and the things that we're showing in elevation there as well. You'll see I put furniture in the elevation line because it's not being cut by the plan, but it is important, but we just want to show it as a kind of light line below any sections we're cutting there as well. So that was sections and elevation lines. The next one down is our hatch, and our hatch will be any kind of um, sort of finish to a material, to a floorboard. If you have grass, if you want to sort of show any materiality to an object, you put it in the hatch layer. And we're gonna make this layer even lighter. And you'll see I've got two different hatches. We've got hatch and hatch light. So I'm gonna turn on both of these. So we've got the hatch, and this is showing some tiling on the floor. We've got some floorboards, some tiles in the kitchen and living room, and also a slight hatch to the inside of the walls as well. Now, for this, we're going to make the print colour even lighter. We'll make it a grey here, and we're going to make the line weight even thinner. We're going to be doing it at 0.05 millimetres. So it's even slimmer than our elevation line, because we just want it to read as a faint kind of hatch behind any of our lines. You don't want your hatch line to be too thick because then it can overpower the drawing completely. So if we go back to our layout you can see there if I zoom out that the hatch is a lot lighter, it's a lot thinner and it's not getting detracted, it's coming apart from our elevation line so we can clearly see the furniture and then a lighter hatch is reading behind it. For the hatch light I usually have two different types of hatches in case I want to make any bits of hatch even fainter and for this particular drawing within this layer, we've got a kind of cross hatch for the grass out here. And I've put it on the hatch light layer. And I'd use that, I'd go even lighter on the color, so we're gonna go light gray. And I'd keep the line weight at about the same because when you get to a sort of 0.05 mil line, you can't really see the difference when you go smaller. And you don't wanna to go too small that you can't see the line at all. So keep it on the same, but just make the color slightly lighter so we can clearly see that there's a difference between the two. Let's have a look there. So you can see that that's very faint on the drawing there. So we're just getting that kind of slightly lighter line weight. And you can already see in the drawing how this hierarchy is working. We can clearly see the outer layers of our structure, 
going all the way down to the thinner hatch layers underneath. Now my last few layers here are sort of reserved for any extra annotation or other pieces you want to note on your drawing. Annotation might be arrows, I've got a little kind of cross mark where the beams are being cut, we've got door swings as well. And sometimes I usually keep this in a black line because these are quite important lines, but we'll make it a bit thinner and we'll put it down to 0.13. So you can clearly see them and I've actually got these as a dotted line type here as well. If you click on the line type under annotation, I've made one here which is a dashed line type too. Um, for more information on line types and plan drawings, please see my 2D architectural drawing videos as well, which go into a bit more detail in setting those up and also hatches. As well as that, we've got our above and our below lines, and these are just to note anything that might be above our drawing and anything that might be below it. I see these as being less important than our annotations, so I'm going to put these on as grey as well, so they're not distracting too much from the rest of the drawing but they're showing the canopy of the tree dotted above and anything that might be below my drawing as well. So that was pretty much it. That's an introduction to line weighting in architectural drawings. We've gone through the section lines down to the hatch line. I hope you find this video helpful and I'll put in the description a list of these line weights so you can refer back to it as well. Um, thank you for watching and please see the channel for any other videos on 2D Rhino or 3D Rhino skills as well. Thank you.